Hi there! If you are a student of English as a second language at the intermediate or advanced level, then this is for you. If you are somebody, a leader, or anybody who wants principles from ancient handwriting or scripture that can be applied to all people at all times, to all religions and culture, then this is for you. If you're a believer of the scripture, and this is a must do for anybody who believes in the scripture, then this is also for you. So for today, let's be reading Ezra chapters 4 to 7, and that later on, we will meditate on it. And uh, before we proceed, let us pray because this ancient scripture is sacred and it needs special wisdom from God the Holy Spirit to help us understand it. I want you to open your mind and really meditate on the principles on it so we will be able to apply it to our life today to improve our quality of life, especially this time of crisis. Let us pray. Oh dear God, we need you to help us understand your scripture so we will be able to apply some principles in our life today to improve our quality of life thank you lord and bless the listeners and readers in jesus name amen all right so let us now and listen to it it's not my word it's not my voice it's uh, from a native speaker so it's good to really learn how they pronounce words in english Chapter 4. Enemies Oppose the Rebuilding The enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were rebuilding a temple to the Lord, the God of Israel. So they approached Zerubbabel and the other leaders and said, Let us build with you, for we worship your God just as you do. We have sacrificed to him ever since King Esarhaddon of Assyria brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the other leaders of Israel replied, You may have no part in this work. We alone will build the temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, just as King Cyrus of Persia commanded us. Then the local residents tried to discourage and frighten the people of Judah to keep them from their work. They bribed agents to work against them and to frustrate their plans. This went on during the entire reign of King Cyrus of Persia and lasted until King Darius of Persia took the throne. Later Opposition Under Xerxes and Artaxerxes Years later, when Xerxes began his reign, the enemies of Judah wrote a letter of accusation against the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Even later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, the enemies of Judah, led by Bishlam, Mithridath, and Tabiel, sent a letter to Artaxerxes in the Aramaic language, and it was translated for the king. Rehum the governor and Shimshai the court secretary wrote the letter, telling King Artaxerxes about the situation in Jerusalem. They greeted the king for all their colleagues, the judges and local leaders, the people of Tarpel, the Persians, the Babylonians, and the people of Erech and Susa, that is, Elam. They also sent greetings from the rest of the people whom the great and noble Ashurbanipal had deported and relocated in Samaria and throughout the neighboring lands of the province west of the Euphrates River. This is a copy of their letter. To King Artaxerxes from your loyal subjects in the province west of the Euphrates River, the king should know that the Jews who came here to Jerusalem from Babylon are rebuilding this rebellious and evil city. They have already laid the foundation and will soon finish its walls. And the king should know that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, it will be much to your disadvantage, for the Jews will then refuse to pay their tribute, customs, and tolls to you. Since we are your loyal subjects and do not want to see the king dishonored in this way, we have sent the king this information. We suggest that a search be made in your ancestors' records, where you will discover what a rebellious city this has been in the past. In fact, it was destroyed because of its long and troublesome history of revolt against the kings and countries who controlled it. We declare to the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the province west of the Euphrates River will be lost to you. Then King Artaxerxes sent this reply. To Rehum the governor, Shimshai the court secretary, and their colleagues living in Samaria and throughout the province west of the Euphrates River. Greetings. The letter you sent has been translated and read to me. 
I ordered a search of the records and have found that Jerusalem has indeed been a hotbed of insurrection against many kings. In fact, rebellion and revolt are normal there. Powerful kings have ruled over Jerusalem and the entire province west of the Euphrates River, receiving tribute, customs, and tolls. Therefore, issue orders to have these men stop their work. That city must not be rebuilt except at my express command. Be diligent and don't neglect this matter, for we must not permit the situation to harm the king's interests. When this letter from King Artaxerxes was read to Rehum, Shimshai, and their colleagues, they hurried to Jerusalem. Then, with a show of strength, they forced the Jews to stop building. The rebuilding resumes. So the work on the Temple of God in Jerusalem had stopped, and it remained at a standstill until the second year of the reign of King Darius of Persia. Chapter 5, next one. Chapter 5. At that time the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Iddo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem. They prophesied in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, responded by starting again to rebuild the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them and helped them. But Tatnai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bazanai and their colleagues soon arrived in Jerusalem and asked, Who gave you permission to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? They also asked for the names of all the men working on the temple. But because their God was watching over them, the leaders of the Jews were not prevented from building until a report was sent to Darius, and he returned his decision. Tatnai's Letter to King Darius this is a copy of the letter that Tatnai, the governor, Shethar Bazanai, and the other officials of the province west of the Euphrates River sent to King Darius. To King Darius, greetings. The king should know that we went to the construction site of the temple of the great god in the province of Judah. It is being rebuilt with specially prepared stones, and timber is being laid in its walls. The work is going forward with great energy and success. We ask the leaders who gave you permission to rebuild this temple and restore the structure, and we demanded their names so that we could tell you who the leaders were. This was their answer. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built here many years ago by a great king of Israel. But because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he abandoned them to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and exiled the people to Babylonia. However, King Cyrus of Babylon, during the first year of his reign, issued a decree that the temple of God should be rebuilt. King Cyrus returned the gold and silver cups that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of Babylon. These cups were taken from that temple and presented to a man named Sheshbazar, whom King Cyrus appointed as governor of Judah. The king instructed him to return the cups to their place in Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple of God there on its original site. So this Sheshbazar came and laid the foundations of the temple of God in Jerusalem. The people have been working on it ever since, though it is not yet completed. Therefore, if it pleases the king, we request that a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to discover whether King Cyrus ever issued a decree to rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem, and then let the king send us his decision in this matter. Now, chapter 5. Of chapter 6. Ah, chapter Darius six. approves the rebuilding. So King Darius issued orders that a search be made in the Babylonian archives, which were stored in the treasury. But it was at the fortress at Ekbatana, in the province of Media, that a scroll was found. This is what it said. Memorandum. In the first year of King Cyrus's reign, a decree was sent out concerning the temple of God at Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt on the site where Jews used to offer their sacrifices, using the original foundations. Its height will be 90 feet, and its width will be 90 feet. Every three layers of specially prepared stones will be topped by a layer of timber. All expenses will be paid by the royal treasury. Furthermore, the gold and silver cups, which were taken to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar from the Temple of God in Jerusalem, must be returned to Jerusalem and put back where they belong. Let them be taken back to the Temple of God. So King Darius sent this message. 
Now therefore, Tatnai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bazanai, and your colleagues and other officials west of the Euphrates River, stay away from there. Do not disturb the construction of the Temple of God. Let it be rebuilt on its original site, and do not hinder the governor of Judah and the elders of the Jews in their work. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these elders of the Jews as they rebuild this temple of God. You must pay the full construction costs without delay from my taxes collected in the province west of the Euphrates River, so that the work will not be interrupted. Give the priests in Jerusalem whatever is needed in the way of young bulls, rams, and male lambs for the burnt offerings presented to the God of heaven. And without fail, provide them with as much wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil as they need each day. Then they will be able to offer acceptable sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the welfare of the king and his sons. Those who violate this decree in any way will have a beam pulled from their house. Then they will be tied to it and flogged, and their house will be reduced to a pile of rubble. May the God who has chosen the city of Jerusalem as the place to honor his name destroy any king or nation that violates this command and destroys this temple. I, Darius, have issued this decree. Let it be obeyed with all diligence. The Temple's Dedication Tatanai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bazanai and their colleagues complied at once with the command of King Darius. So the Jewish elders continued their work, and they were greatly encouraged by the preaching of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Iddo. The temple was finally finished, as had been commanded by the God of Israel, and decreed by Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, the kings of Persia. The temple was completed on March 12, during the sixth year of King Darius's reign. The temple of God was then dedicated with great joy by the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the people who had returned from exile. During the dedication ceremony for the temple of God, 100 young bulls, 200 rams, and 400 male lambs were sacrificed, and 12 male goats were presented as a sin offering for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then the priests and Levites were divided into their various divisions to serve at the temple of God in Jerusalem as prescribed in the book of Moses. Celebration of Passover On April 21, the returned exiles celebrated Passover. The priests and Levites had purified themselves and were ceremonially clean. So they slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for their fellow priests, and for themselves. The Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile, and by the others in the land who had turned from their immoral customs to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. Then they celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. There was great joy throughout the land because the Lord had caused the king of Assyria to be favorable to them, so that he helped them to rebuild the temple of God, the God of Israel. Chapter 7. Yes. Ezra arrives in Jerusalem. Okay. Many years later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, there was a man named Ezra. He was the son of Sireah, son of Azariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Ahitub, son of Amariah, son of Azariah, son of Mireath, son of Zerahiah, son of Uzai, son of Bukai, son of Abishua, son of Phinehas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the high priest. This Ezra was a scribe who was well versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given to the people of Israel. He came up to Jerusalem from Babylon, and the king gave him everything he asked for, because the gracious hand of the Lord his God was on him. Some of the people of Israel, as well as some of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants, traveled up to Jerusalem with him in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes' reign. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in August of that year. He had arranged to leave Babylon on April 8, the first day of the new year, and he arrived at Jerusalem on August 4, for the gracious hand of his God was on him. This was because Ezra had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and to teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. Artaxerxes' Letter to Ezra 
King Artaxerxes had given a copy of the following letter to Ezra, the priest and scribe who studied and taught the commands and decrees of the Lord to Israel. From Artaxerxes, the king of kings, to Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law of the God of heaven. Greetings. I decree that any of the people of Israel in my kingdom, including the priests and Levites, may volunteer to return to Jerusalem with you. I and my council of seven hereby instruct you to conduct an inquiry into the situation in Judah and Jerusalem, based on your God's law, which is in your hand. We also commission you to take with you silver and gold, which we are freely presenting as an offering to the God of Israel, who lives in Jerusalem. Furthermore, you are to take any silver and gold that you may obtain from the province of Babylon, as well as the voluntary offerings of the people and the priests that are presented for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. These donations are to be used specifically for the purchase of bulls, rams, male lambs, and the appropriate grain offerings and liquid offerings, all of which will be offered on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem. Any silver and gold that is left over may be used in whatever way you and your colleagues feel is the will of your God. But as for the cups we are entrusting to you for the service of the temple of your God, deliver them all to the God of Jerusalem. If you need anything else for your God's temple, or for any similar needs, you may take it from the royal treasury. I, Artaxerxes the king, hereby send this decree to all the treasurers in the province west of the Euphrates River. You are to give Ezra the priest and teacher of the law of the God of heaven whatever he requests of you. You are to give him up to 7,500 pounds of silver, 500 bushels of wheat, 550 gallons of wine, 550 gallons of olive oil, and an unlimited supply of salt. Be careful to provide whatever the God of heaven demands for his temple, for why should we risk bringing God's anger against the realm of the king and his sons? I also decree that no priest, Levite, singer, gatekeeper, temple servant, or other worker in this temple of God will be required to pay tribute, customs, or tolls of any kind. And you, Ezra, are to use the wisdom your God has given you to appoint magistrates and judges who know your God's laws to govern all the people in the province west of the Euphrates River. Teach the law to anyone who does not know it. Anyone who refuses to obey the law of your God and the law of the king will be punished immediately, either by death, banishment, confiscation of goods, or imprisonment. Ezra praises the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of our ancestors, who made the king want to beautify the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, and praise him for demonstrating such unfailing love to me by honoring me before the king, his council, and all his mighty nobles. I felt encouraged, because the gracious hand of the Lord my God was on me, and I gathered some of the leaders of Israel to return with me to Jerusalem. Okay. So, chapter 8. Exactly. No, we will do chapter 8 next time. Okay? Alright? Now, let me emphasize something. Of, I am also, I, let me say, I have been a, an ESL teacher for 16 years in three countries. China. I mean, yeah, Philippines. Also here in Thailand. And I taught three groups of people the Koreans in the Philippines and the Chinese and the Thais I should say that that the Koreans are the craziest ones about English next are the Chinese I'm challenging the Thais who are more into lax sabay sabay type of study to learn more and so I also even right now these voluntarily, which I call LETS, L-E-T-S, learn English through scripture. I do it for free to my students who come to me. Uh, some are even teachers, Chinese teachers come to me and uh, I give it for free because I want to help them. Uh, why me, a non-native speaker of English? Because this is how I learn and I know the struggles of non-native speakers of English and I've been there and so I can help you to where you get want to be and uh, to where you want actually to maybe advanced level or intermediate level and uh, you can contact me personally I can give you a customized lesson 
depending on your purpose. And so right here, it's time for meditation. I hope you will meditate on it. You can keep reading. And one technique also is you enunciate the words. Read it with your mouth because you'll be exercising the muscles. Uh, your mouth muscles in your throat in here. And so that developed through the years. It may take some time for you. It depends on how diligent you are as a student. Okay? And so let us go back later on. Uh, after meditation, it will take hours to meditate but then i will give you the summary later on just for today uh before we close let's pray again oh dear god we thank you so much for your scripture it can give us a lot of lessons uh, some principles that are applicable to our time today help us to read more on it and thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus' name amen Okay, so contact me later on if you want to develop your vocabulary, build your vocabulary, and uh, develop your skills in reading, uh, listening, and even speaking. We will use this text as the source of material because English language uh, actually has a lot of idioms. And now NLT, New Living Translation, is so easy for all of us. You can use this as the material in your language learning. See you there. Pastor Raleigh here. Have a good day. Bye-bye, and see you next time. Well, don't forget to like if you like here. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you really want to get updated, okay? Just in case you're blessed with this one, and uh, don't forget to click subscribe. Bye-bye.